guys, and welcome back to another unconventional challenge video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming. So in my last challenge video, I attempted to beat Super Mario 64 while keeping Mario as tiny as possible. At the end of the video, I set a huge goal of 5,000 likes if you guys wanted to see me retry the challenge but have Mario as big as possible instead. Well, you guys absolutely smashed that goal, and way sooner than I expected. So, here we are. And I heard you guys in the comments section last time too. So, no more backwards long jumps or glitchy shortcuts. This time, we're gonna try and beat the game legitimately, and we're going for gold. All 120 stars in the game. Just like with the mini Mario challenge, I'll be using the tiny huge Mario 64 ROM hack made by Kaze to grow Mario and his hitbox to a much bigger size. And as always, let's set out some ground rules. We'll start out the challenge with Mario at around 8 times his normal size, since according to Kays, you'll be too big to even still play the game. Yeah, we'll see about that. Should a part become impossible, I will decrease Mario's size incrementally until it's doable, with the ultimate goal here of keeping Mario as large as possible. And with all of that out of the way, let's crush some Mega Mushrooms and begin in 3, 2, one. As usual, the intro cutscene begins, and uh, wait, where's Mario? Oh, uh, guess Mario jumped so far out of the warp pipe that we're starting in the water now. One super easy Lakitu skip later, and we're in the castle. Or not. One thing that will be a big problem in this challenge is going through doors. Since Mario is so big now, as soon as he goes through a door, his hitbox is still in the door when he gets to the other side, so moving anywhere will automatically cause him to go back through the door. To combat this, after going through each door, we have to either remember to either crawl away or throw a few punches. Anyways, on to the first course we go, bob on Battlefield. Damn, boy, he's thick! So if you've watched my previous challenge videos, you'll know I don't always get the stars in order, so let's first try to get the star behind the Chain Chomp, who is now only like half of Mario's size. As Mini Mario, we weren't able to get through the cage, but let's see if Mario's hitbox is now big enough to get the star there. And yes! Okay? Yeah, I guess if we jump to get a star, the extra height Mario normally gets is scaled with the increase of his size. And now Mario is a rocket ship. A few other things you might have noticed by now, that Mario falls relatively slowly since I guess he still falls at the same speed as he does at normal size, and that as soon as we move, Mario transforms into his low poly form, or as I like to call him, Lego Mario. This probably happens since, just like a lot of things, the distance Lakitu is from Mario also is likely scaled with his size increase, so the game thinks the camera is far away enough that we can't see low poly Mario, but yeah, that's definitely not the case. But anyway, let's move on. The King bob fight wasn't all too bad, it was just a bit tricky to run behind him, and since Mario's hitbox is now bigger, it's much easier to get grabbed by King bob -omb. And he must have been working out, because hot dang, look at that throw. On the flip side, now that Mario is so big, picking up the king looks like Mario's going bowling. The race with Koopa the Quick is super easy, like less than 15 seconds easy. Another interesting thing to see at this size is going into a cannon. For some reason the cannon scope is way off the ground. Now I don't know exactly how this was programmed, but I can only assume that it's set to be at the height of Mario's eyes or something. In any case, the scope here is forced to point downwards, and after shooting, the camera just whizzes off. So I think it's safe to say the cannons aren't going to be useful for this challenge. The star at the top of the floating island is easy, as is grabbing all the 8 red coins here. On the other hand though, getting the coins in the sky was surprisingly difficult, which made both getting all the 100 coins here and the Mario Wings to the Sky star a bit tough to get. And that brings me to another point in this challenge. Although obviously Mario's hitbox is bigger than normal, it's not quite as big as Mario appears, since it's obvious I'm touching coins and such, but not collecting them. But for now, it's only a minor inconvenience, as with some patience and precise jumping, that's two more stars in the bag. And with that, the first course is 100% completed. Off to a pretty good start, if I do say so myself. Now off to Womp's Fortress we go. Mario can actually fall off the stage here, so we gotta be a bit more careful. 
Much like the caged up star in Babon Battlefield, due to Mario's hitbox, getting the star hidden in the wall here is easier than ever. Cannonless indeed. The fight with the Womp King at the top of the fortress was actually slightly more difficult than normal since one slight mistake will cause Mario to bonk and basically fly off the stage. But with some properly timed ground pounds, that's star number 9. Climbing to the top of the tower took mere seconds and getting the star on this platform was cake. No problems there. And getting all 8 red coins and the 100 coin star wasn't too bad, just again, one wrong move and something can go wrong like sliding off the stage or picking up the star here again by accident. It's time now to get the star up in the cage. Now sure, I could easily just jump up to the cage, but no, Hoot is not getting a day off. So let's see if we can still get Hoot to lift us up. I gotta give it to him, he is one strong owl. One owl drop later and that's another complete course down. Things are looking good. The light is now shining down for us in the castle foyer, so let's look our way up to the tower of the wing cap. Landing on the tower to hit the wing cap switch was fine, but oh boy, Mario just flies so fast at the size that there is no way to even make a single turn when flying without exiting the boundaries of the course. Jumping off from the tower didn't help either, so the 8 red coin here I'm deeming impossible, at least for now. Cool Cool Mountain is up, and what's normally a super easy start at the bottom of the slide is now not so easy. Just like flying, sliding is now incredibly fast, like way too fast to make any of the turns. The only way I was able to get through this slide was to slide off, switch to Mario Cam, and pray that I'd land back on the slide and then make it across the ice bridge. All I gotta say is, shoutouts to save states. This was all for naught though, as I later found out that even though you normally can't enter the bottom area of the slide, since Mario is so big he can still trigger the hitbox to enter the door and walk back out which instantly spawns the star. Ah well, that might have been good for that star, but we still have to do the race again with the penguin there anyway. I thought I could replicate my strategy against the penguin, but apparently he considered that cheating. Well, it turns out there are certain invisible checkpoints you have to pass along the way down the slide in order for the penguin to not think you're cheating the race. At this point, I've already been sliding down here for like 3 hours, so I'm gonna just skip this one and the 100 coin star here for now since most of the coins are on the slide. We'll meet again, Discount Pingu. Getting the wall kicks will work star and the red coins and bringing Tuxie back to her mama were simple. Though for some reason, Mama Penguin didn't really want to notice me until I was in some certain spot, which was pretty weird. Since we can't do the snowman lost his head star without first beating the penguin at his stupid race, I guess let's move on for now. Before diving into Jolly Roger Bay, let's first jump into the secret aquarium. And guess what, some more odd things to talk about. Just like we saw in the mini Mario challenge, regardless of Mario's size, his swimming speed is constant. So if Mario is smaller, it seems like Mario swims relatively much faster. And here on the other hand, at this giant size, it looks like Mario is incredibly slow. Even though in both cases Mario swims just as fast as always. Additionally, it seems that Mario's hitbox underwater is the same size as regular Mario's, making getting the coins deceptively difficult. I'm not sure if K's didn't change the hitbox for Mario in water, or if I'm just tripping, but to me it definitely felt a bit different. Well, we got the star here, but now I am in no way excited for any of the water sections of this challenge. Thankfully, in Jolly Roger Bay, we can skip much of the swimming by jumping from the water, which allows us to travel across most of the course pretty quickly. Just like I expected, swimming here isn't any better, especially due to the camera not following Mario close enough, so it's often really hard to tell where Mario is swimming. And due to Mario's hitbox still being relatively small, again, even just touching all the treasure chests in the sunken ship was annoyingly difficult. I guess that's a good way to describe the challenge so far though. Definitely not technically difficult as the mini Mario challenge, but just annoyingly difficult. The same goes for debating the star from the Unagi. It was just really hard to actually get the hitboxes to touch. 
The other stars here, like the treasure in the cave, the red coins, the star up on the platform, and the 100 coin star were all pretty easy to get. When planning this challenge, I was really hoping Mario's hitbox would be big enough to grab the star in the jet stream without having to use the metal cap, but that's just not the case, so I guess we'll come back for it later. At this point, we have way more than the 8 required stars to go to the first Bowser stage, but let's first hit up Big Boo's haunts. Jumping into the Big Boo cage is what inspired this series of challenges, so let's see what it looks like at this size. It looks like Mario shrinks down to his normal size to jump in. Pretty cool. Once in, getting the Boo on the balcony was really easy since Mario's ground pound, which is amazing at normal size, is now even better with his bigger hitbox. Jumping up to get the star on the platform here was a no-brainer, which thankfully allows us to completely skip the haunted book room. The ghost hunt was pretty easy for the most part, just some rooms need extra care so you don't fall into the basements. The red coin and 100 coin star here are easy as per usual so far, and after getting the star from the Big Boo's merry-go-round, the last star is in the secret room which still requires a vanish cap to get, so it's another star that we'll have to come back to. With 5 courses down and 31 stars in hand, it's now time for Bowser in the Dark World. Getting up to the top was no problem, but getting all 8 red coins was a bit tough, but still doable. Now with the Bowser fight, we have some more inconveniences. Not only do you basically have to use Mario Cam, which makes movement much harder here, but Mario's hitbox is so big that Bowser is still in it when you throw him, which instantly damages Mario, so you gotta be careful. Also, just touching Bowser or getting hit by his flames will send Mario right off the stage. Yikes. Thankfully, only one throw is required, and bada boom, bada bing, we have the first key. Now we venture into the basement, where even though we already have enough stars to go to the second Bowser course, let's keep hunting. With Mario's bigger hitbox and ability to cover ground much faster, catching Mips was easier than ever before. Anyways, let's first hit up Lethal Lava Land, which of course has lava, which is lethal. Even extra lethal now, apparently, as touching it sends Mario flying hundreds of meters in the air. But we can use this to our advantage in this stage, as it can allow us to quickly move and fall pretty much anywhere in the course. So, thumbs up for that. Grabbing the 8 red coins here is always easy, and here is no exception. Furthermore, at this size I was able to easily grab the star through the fence here, effectively skipping that entire section of the course. One thing that does suck in this course is fighting the bullies. They're annoying as it is, but at this size, they are even harder to knock off, since due to Mario's increased size, punching them doesn't work, and due to the increased jump height, they often move away from the edges by the time Mario comes back down. But either way, with some patience, which I don't have a lot of, the Boil, the Big Bully, and Bully the Bully's stars are both doable. Both stars in the volcano were super simple by just hitting the lava, and then gently floating back down on top of them. At this point, I'm feeling pretty lavaed out, so I'll come back for the 100 coin star later. After getting a free star from the toad down here, let's now jump into Hazy Maze Cave. The star above the pit here was super easy, as was the star past the rolling rocks. And next I wanted to try and use the wall glitch here to clip right down to Dory. But unfortunately, due to Mario's bigger hitbox, he definitely trips up a death boundary on the way there. So I guess we'll have to get down there the boring, normal way. But first, let's get all 8 red coins, the 100 coin star, and the star here behind the fence. Easy peasy. Now going down to Dory, that's another easy star, and access to getting the metal cap. 8 red coins there, and another star later, the metal cap switch is now activated, and we can head back down to the cavern and get the last star of this course. Next up on the list is Shifting Sandland. The star on the side of the pyramid literally took two jumps, and getting the star back from Klepto was super easy. I was curious to see what would happen when Klepto steals Mario's hat here though. I was hoping that he would end up with a huge hat in his mouth, but unfortunately the hat shrinks back down to normal size. Bummer. 
Now, I don't think I've ever seen Low Poly Mario hatless, but dang, look at that hair. Getting up to the top of the inside of the pyramid was quick, but also annoying since Mario would, of course, often bonk on something which would send him falling down to the bottom. Regardless, the star at the top and the pyramid coin puzzle were both doable. Now, after getting the 100 coin star and standing on each of the four pillars, let's square up against Irock. This fight was okay, except that each punch against the hands would send Mario recoiling back the other way. This was fine until the last punch which seemed to recoil even more, like a stupid amount that would basically insta-kill Mario every single time. After numerous attempts, I was somehow able to jump on the final hand and defeat it. I was really close to deeming this fight impossible, so I'm glad it worked out. Then, after getting 8 red coins, we can add Shifting Sandland to our list of courses that are 100% completed. Alright, now time to open up the 32 star door in the basement and jump into Dire Dire Docks. At the expense of sounding like a broken record, the swimming here sucks, and jumping up onto Bowser's sub was surprisingly difficult because Mario jumped so far out of the water. But after grabbing that star, I was able to get 100 coins and all the red coins with no trouble. Although quite annoying, the chest in the current star is doable, and on the other side, getting the star in this cage was super easy as I didn't even need the Vanish Cap since Mario's bigger hitbox could just get it through the cage. The Through the Jetstream star was also pretty easy after just jumping on the stream as Giant Metal Mario. But ugh, swimming through the Manta Ray rings is such a pain. The camera being so far away that I could hardly see where I was swimming, coupled with Mario's relatively small hitbox underwater, made this essentially impossible. I'll have to come back to this one. Okay, now on to Bowser in the Fire Sea. Just like in Lethal Lava Land, the lava here can be used to our advantage to fly up and fall right down into the warp pipe at the end, basically skipping the entire course. Bowser here is basically just as challenging as last time, but again, one throw into a bomb and he's down for the count and the second key is ours. Then after quickly running through the course again and grabbing all the red coins, we are now up to 62 stars. At this point, I might as well have another go at the penguin race. Let me tell ya, this was painful. And those of you that watched me stream this, you guys understand the pain. Quick shameless plug, if you want to watch me play through and collect footage for videos like this, be sure to follow me over on Twitch. Anyways, after many, many, many attempts, eventually I was able to slide and ground pound my way precisely through each of the invisible checkpoints, and defeat the penguin at his own race. Definitely adding that one to my resume. And with that star done, I went to the slide one last time to get more coins for the 100 coin star, and I was finally able to reunite the snowman's head with his body. And with that, Cool Cool Mountain is now 100% completed. And speaking of revisiting levels, I also went back to Jolly Roger Bay, where with the metal cap, we can finally get the star in the jet stream. Or can we? I tried and tried to grab the star and jumped at like every possible spot, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get it. I know some speedrunners can swim their way into the star without the metal cap, but I just couldn't do it. This was another star I was ready to deem impossible at this size, that is until one attempt I tried quickly swimming as soon as Mario's metal cap wore off, and I guess I must have just been in the right spot as I was able to somehow grab the star. Speaking of caps, I think it's time we go activate the Vanish Cap switch. Another easy 8 red coin star down, and now we have the Vanish Cap at our disposal. So to quickly recap, I got every star so far except for the red coins in the Wing Cap stage, the last star in Big Boo's Haunt, the 100 coins in Lethal Lava Land, and the Manta Ray star in Dire Dire Docks. So at 67 stars, it looks like just beating the game with 70 stars is definitely easily doable. So good thing we're going for all 120. But out of curiosity, I wanted to see if Mario is too big for the endless stairs and if BLJing still works. Well, you can't just run up the stairs, but it looks like just a simple jump breaks the looping stair sequence. And I guess we technically can backwards long jump up the stairs, but not the same way Mario has to normally. 
The backwards jump breaks the looping sequence the same way the regular jump did, but it's too high to catch the stairs and build up enough speed, or anything like that. Again, even though we can go to the final Bowser stage now, let's first try the rest of the courses on the second and third floor. So first up, let's visit Wet Dry World. Here, basically all of the stars are super easy because Mario can cover so much of the stage so quickly. This one here, the one at the top, all the secret spots, and also the star in the cage here can be easily grabbed without even going inside. And the stars in the hidden underwater town as well as the 100 coin star were all just as easy. That was like 7 easy stars in mere minutes. Let's just hope the rest of the courses go this well. And coming up is Tiny Huge Island. Which I guess is now Tiny and even Tinier Island. It's really funny how tiny the piranha plants appear at this size when normally they're the ones that look massive. Anyway, after bopping them all, another star down. The tiny version of this stage, although amusing to see, was actually very annoying to play on because all the platforms were now very small and one slightly wrong move and Mario will slide right off just like in Womp's Fortress. Thankfully, all that we really need to do in this version of the stage is touch all the secret locations, which is incredibly easy with Mario's big hitbox, and drain the water at the top of the mountain to go fight Wiggler inside. Three head stomps later, and with the power of Nathaniel Bandy's Twitch donations, Star 77 is secured. The star near the top of the mountain and the rematch with Koopa the Quick are all super easy and doable. But here is where we get to another star that is 100% unobtainable at this size. Although entering the inside of the mountain is no problem from above, going through the side entrance will result in the game soft locking in an endless loop, or a GBJ as the cool kids call it. I suppose Mario's hitbox is so big that as soon as he appears in the next room, he is already touching the collision box of the entrance, automatically sending him back. Unfortunately for this challenge though, all 8 red coins are in there, so that star is impossible, at least for the time being. Thankfully though, since this course has the most coins out of any in the game, the 100 coin star is still very much possible. After getting yet another easy free star from the toad here, onwards to Tall Tall Mountain. Right off the bat, it seems like the hardest part of this course is just jumping inside the painting. It takes some finessing, but eventually you can squeeze Mario in. We can easily get the star here with a quick jump to skip the entire slide segment, which is definitely something I don't want to experience. Scaling the mountain is super easy like you'd expect by now, so all three of the stars up there are hardly a challenge, and neither is the lone star on top of this mushroom. But not all is peachy, as the difficulty of this level lies in the coins. For once, grabbing all 8 red coins was actually pretty challenging, since 4 of them are on these mushrooms, and the other 4 are in this mountain side maze thing. In both cases, jumping around to get the coins at this size proved to be pretty tough without falling down. Tough, but definitely doable. The 100 coin star though? Oh boy, well, since the slide segment of the stage has I think like 62 coins out of the stage's 135 obtainable coins, I really have no choice but to brave the slide that I hate so much. And this slide was definitely more difficult than the one in Cool Cool Mountain. At least there I could see ahead of me and could slide off the slide and get to the end. But here, everything is super dark, and the slide only illuminates when Mario is super close. Again, Mario slides super fast, so I had to control his speed with as many ground pounds as I could. But even that wasn't much help at this junction here, where a very sharp turn has to be made. I must have spent a good portion of an hour just trying and trying to make this turn. It's hard to really show how much of a struggle this was, but trust me, don't try this at home, kids. After numerous attempts though, I was able to get through the slide with enough coins to return to the outside to grab some more, and get the final star of this course. Sure am glad that's over, definitely the hardest 100 coin star I've ever done. Now on to Snowman's Land we go. 
Interestingly, in the mirror room, Mario's reflection is also giant, and we can see Lakitu's reflection far in the distance to get kind of an idea of how relatively far he really is from Mario. And even more interestingly, as soon as Mario jumps into the wall, the Mario in the reflection can be seen asserting his dominance with a sort of T-pose. This must be what always happens, we just can't normally see it. Anyway, most of the stars here are really easy, like the one in this ice sculpture thing, the one in this box, the one on the snowman's head, and the one from the fight with the chill bully, which was just as annoying as the bullies in Lethal Lava Land. The red coins were also all really easy except for the ones on the icy water that burns Mario as if it were lava. Normally, Mario has to ride a shell to get both of the red coins there, but at this size, Mario moves insanely fast on the shell, making this easier said than done. But luckily, I was able to get the red coin that's located under the ice platform, so getting the other one was much easier as long as I was willing to sacrifice some life points. And with that star down, it's now time to enter the igloo and get the last of the coins for the 100 coin star and the other star that's located there. Uh oh, not this again. <sighs> well, it appears that just like the cave in Tiny Huge Island, the igloo entrance also results in a never ending entering and exiting soft lock. This one sucks even more though, because unlike Tiny Huge Island, which has an abundance of coins, the coins in this igloo are required to get 100 coins in the stage. Well, guess that's two more stars we can strike off the list for now. To try and kind of make up for this loss, since I guess I forgot to do it sooner, let's go revisit Big Boo's Haunt now with the Vanish Cap. Up to the attic we go, and after bamboozling the Mr. Eye up there, that's another course completed. And now on to the third floor where the last two courses remain. But first, let's have a go at the Wing Mario over the Rainbow Secret Star. Based on how well the Tower of the Wing Cap Red Coins went, I'm not too hopeful for this one. Thankfully enough though, due to Mario's size and jump height, you don't even need to fly here. Instead, I was able to just jump and float around with the Wing Cap to get all eight red coins. That being said, most of the jumps were pretty precise though, and needed some planning, but it's doable. And coming up next is of course TikTok Clock, and this doesn't look good at all. Yeah, the camera in this course doesn't do us any favors. Timing the clock so everything in the stage is frozen helps a lot here, since pretty much everything in this course can cause Mario to bonk or slide down to his death. But with a planned out path to jump up the stage, it's actually not all that bad. Each star here can be pretty easily grabbed on the way up with relative ease. Even the red coins and 100 coin star are easy to get again. Another quick and easy level 100% completed. Now finally onto my least favorite course, Rainbow Ride. However, with Mario's ability to jump far at this size, pretty much all the stars here are again easy to get. I mean, permitted you don't miss a jump and fall. <coughs> Honestly, this course isn't so bad if you don't have to ride the magic carpets around. The only kind of tricky part of this course was getting 100 coins, since it required traversing most of the stage, which resulted in quite a few missed jumps. But with some more patience, it's doable, and Rainbow Ride is completed. Okay, now we got 110 stars, meaning we're missing 10 of them, so let's try and get a few more before Bowser. So first, let's go back to Lethal Lava Land and try to get the 100 coins there. It's just as bad as I anticipated. The coins are all spread out, and avoiding the lava is still super annoying. On my first try, I was so close, but was only a few coins short, and since you can't exit the volcano after entering it, I was stuck and had to retry again. The second time around, after defeating more bullies, I was barely able to scrape by and get enough coins for the star. At this point, I gave myself a big forehead slap as I realized I had completely neglected the princess's secret slide. Being another slide, it was still kinda difficult with the insane speed, but at least I knew where to jump to get to the bottom. And I was able to clear the slide in like 10 seconds, which is a way better time than I've ever gotten. With the two stars there, and the second star you can get for catching Mips a second time, which I may have also forgot about, we are now up to 114 stars. Minus the ones I deemed impossible, that's pretty much all the stars we can get, minus the one in the final Bowser course. 
So let's head to Bowser in the Sky for the final fight before we unfortunately have to reduce Mario's size. Just like the other Bowser stages, this one is still really easy to climb up to the end, and honestly, this one probably had the easiest red coins to grab out of all three. Now with 115 stars in hand, it's time to go fight Bowser for the third and last time. This Bowser fight was definitely the hardest out of the bunch. Not only does Mario have to throw Bowser into a bomb three times, but the stage also collapses into a star shape for the last throw. This is bad, because the last throw will require some planning since if you're in a bad spot, the recoil from the throw will launch Mario off the platform. And since each throw still damages Mario, you can't make any mistakes. It was a tough battle, but eventually I nailed all three throws and Bowser is done. At least until the next challenge. So yes, this game is beatable at this giant size. But before we roll credits, we need to see how big we can be to get all 120 stars. So our first size reduction will be down to 734% of Mario's normal size. Just like in the Mini Mario Challenge, these size changes may seem arbitrary, but I took the size intervals given by K's and made equal hex value increments between them to use for the size cheats and then interpolated the size difference values for each increment. <laughs> Math, am I right? So with the first size change, the igloo was still a soft lock, and I assumed the tiny huge island cave would be as well. So I guess we have to drop our size again. It actually took two increments of reduction until I was able to get into the igloo, bringing Mario down to 569%, or 5.7 times his normal size. Even then, at first I thought it was still going to soft lock since Mario got instantly kicked back out, but the cycle was broken, so there's hope. A few more tries, and yes, I was somehow able to finesse my way inside. Awesome, with the star in there and the extra coins, that's two more stars down. Let's see if the Wiggler Cave is any better, and no. No matter how I try, this entrance still results in a soft lock. Before shrinking any further though, let's go retry the Manta Ray Star. It took a long while, but eventually I was lucky enough to line up some of the rings and finally get the star here. I tried the wing cap course again, and although now it's better, it's still impossible with the stage's small boundaries, so unfortunately we have to go down another size. Now down to 477% of Mario's normal size, let's try these again. The wing cap one is still unobtainable, but how about the wiggler cave? And yes, at this size, Mario is able to break away far enough from the entrance hitbox and stay inside the cave. Finally. With that star down, only one to go. I decided to do a half increment here since I felt so close to being able to do the wing cap star, so now Mario's size is down to 437% of normal. It was still a challenge, but after some sharp turns and triple jumps, the last star is done. And that means all 120 stars are doable at just over four times Mario's normal size. As with the other challenges I've tackled, this wasn't the most enjoyable way to take on this game by any means, but on the flip side, it was interesting to gain a deeper understanding of how some of the game's mechanics work. Admittedly, I finished a bit smaller than I was hoping for, but on the bright side, I'm glad I was able to get 115 of the 120 stars with Giant Mario at a massive 8 times his normal size. I always love watching the end cutscene of these challenges because they always look so goofy. Here we got Peach kissing Mario's ankle and Mario stomping on the toads. Nice. But anyways, that wraps up this challenge video guys. It was a struggle, so I really hope you all enjoyed it. This was another really long video, so as always, props to you if you made it to the end. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me take on more unconventional challenges, be sure to slap a like down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. I have some pretty interesting ideas for some future challenges, so stay tuned. And if you have any challenge ideas for a future video, leave them down in the comments. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, be sure to check out my other challenges by clicking on the card right here. 
And if you're new around here and would like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, be sure to subscribe here as well as swing by my Twitter and other social media things which are all linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support. And I will see you in a bit.